Pastor Yemi David is the president and founding pastor of Global Impact Ministries with headquarters at the Goodland Ogudu, Lagos and multiple expressions in Nigeria, USA, UK, the European Union and Canada, running multiple services every weekend. Pastor Yemi Davids believes that man was created as a possibility and not a finality and that the seeds of greatness are within everyone crying for expression. He is a highly sought after speaker in practical wisdom and applicable life teachings. He is the convener of the annual Mid-Year Conference, Recharge Conference. He has a passion for leadership and hosts the annual Ministers and Leaders Forum dedicated to developing and building leaders. He possesses an advanced diploma in Pastoral and Transformational Leadership, RILA. Pastor Yemi Davids has extensive qualifications from Obafemi Awolowo University, the Word of Faith Bible Institute by Living Faith Church, Daystar Leadership Academy Nigeria, Institute of Leadership and Management UK to mention but a few. With a strong desire to see people fulfill their potential, Pastor Yemi has authored several books including 31 Days of Success, Achieve Greatness series, In Pursuit of Academic Excellence, Seven Laws of Favor, Blessing of Overflow, Light Up Your Destiny, and so on. Pastor Yemi is married to Bimbo and both live in Lagos with their four adorable daughters. Global Impact Church, with great honor, a standing ovation, and a loud shout, please make welcome our host at the Ministers and Leaders Forum 2024, Pastor Yemi David, for his first session. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you've joined in from. But for those of us here in Lagos, Nigeria, good morning to us. Once again, welcome to MLF 2024. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Glad to have us here from all over the country. Uh, I see so many people. I mean, we'll do some of those greetings later. But let's just get right into it. Let's have our seats. Um, I, as Pastor God's will mentioned, let's do our best to focus. Believe me, I have been in trainings where I was not the senior pastor but my life was transformed. So I don't know who you are. Maybe you came with your pastor as PA, or you are even the senior pastor yourself. I want everyone to be ready to pick lessons. My joy is that if Jesus can impact 12 people, and at the end of the day, they took over the world, and we're still talking about them today, uh, then we are hundreds here. Uh, then... Um, God is up to something. Glory to God. A lot now depends on the student, so to say, to be able to pick up the lessons that the Holy Spirit will be passing across. Uh, as I was preparing for this particular session, I, I just wanted to show some slides. It's a kind of story. It's a story some of us are familiar with because this uh, end of this month and early April, marks our 10-year anniversary here at the Good Land. Glory to God. 10 years, 10 years here at the Good Land. And I was just thinking, okay, maybe I should just talk about it because not everybody really uh, knows the story. Uh, some people know it, but I, I think it might encourage one or two pastors or leaders as God begins to take us into various uh, places in our ministry. And by the way, the theme of the ministry, uh, the conference is built to last. As much as we talk about church growth, finances, and all those stuff, the real core of this year is fortifying ourselves with the requisite wisdom to, um, to be in the game for a long time. It's always painful when you see, I mean, some of us have observed that, even in your own community or your state, or nation where somebody was just, you know, thriving, everybody, and then suddenly you don't hear the person anymore. And you ask yourself, what is the essence of the success? Uh, and all those things can just be in 15 years. It can be 10 years. It can be 20 years. But when it's gone, it's gone. So we need to keep learning what it takes to last. And by the way, I'm also learning because I'm still young, as it were, in the game. So let's look at the, the Goodland story. I just showed some 
some um, slides. Uh, guys, if you can help me with the next slide on the story of the good land. When we got here, it was a barren land. It, it was, there was no name. It was a marsh. I remember when a uh, lawyer at that time brought me here. I, I don't even know what made me to accept that we can move here. Maybe because of my experience as a student when I was doing industrial attachment in Canaan land in my part four, I was a storekeeper uh, and also learning. I saw a whole forest. Uh, I saw how the excavation started, how trees were coming down. I saw when the faith tabernacle started. I saw, I saw all those things. And just my very eyes, I saw it rising. And I saw the challenges also. So I'm thinking maybe that was why uh, I had the faith that, okay, something can also happen here. And I remember uh, traveling to Dubai uh, severally and studying the story of Dubai. I remember looking at how a barren land, like a wilderness, can become a beautiful city. Maybe those things contributed to the faith that something can happen out here. And that's to also say to you, all the things you are going through will come to play in the things that God will want to do in the future. I realized that those experiences touch my life. And when I go for Global Leadership Summit in Chicago, uh, it's hosted by Willow Creek uh, Community Church. That church is around a creek. So I remember, you know, after the sessions, I walk around and I saw the creek, the water, and okay, so and how they built, you know. So I think those things uh, maybe set the pace from my heart to be able to I even accept that something can happen here. And I believe so much more will still happen uh, in this place. So let's look at some pictures um, that, um, so I hope this is a bit clear. Okay, this was how it was. Well, it wasn't like this. This is better. This was when we started sun filling the land. It was a marsh. We used to, you know, it, it was so bad that the water could get to, like, more than you know, your waist up. You know, we started sun filling. I thought the sun filling was going to be easy, but we spent at that time maybe 40 million on just sun filling alone. You know, let's go. Um, Okay, so, and by the way, when we went to the government, there was no name for the entire place. I mean, normally, it, it, the government should have a name, what do you call this area? So, I remember I had to go and pray to God and say, Lord, okay, what is the name of the place? And then he showed me that verse, for the Lord, I go bring it to a good land. And I said uh, to our team, that is the name of the place. Okay, next slide. Okay, this looks a bit dark. Okay, so when we moved in here, we, we, the, where we have as our junior church today is the, um, this, before, this is the dome, okay? But before this, can you move to the next, the slides after this? Uh, the, not this one. Not this. Yeah, this was <laughs> the tent there where we have the junior church presently and it was good we had a great time there and the lesson for us is i don't know where you are using now as a church maximize it make it beautiful make it excellent enjoy it and then god will move you to a higher place as much as possible you can go to the next pictures yeah this was at the tent there some of us were there also some of our pastors here were there some of them have left the country you know okay the next slide now, before this, I'll now go back to when the dome started. So, we were there for some years before the dome uh, came to place. So, this is how the dome started. It, it was a miracle. Uh, uh, sometimes, I've not had the opportunity of sharing the story. Under four months, God just did it, especially with the government. It's amazing how, because uh, we've not seen this before in terms of the trusses, and we had to bring some gigantic cranes to do that. And we're still talking to the government, you know. And some way, somehow, there was no trouble. It was a bit after pandemic, you know. There was no trouble. And upon completion, it just dawned on the government that how did we really allow this to happen? You know, because even for us, it was an experiment. And I remember the center's demolition, um, what do you call that? Demolition notice. About four times, this place was supposed to be demolished, in case you don't know. Uh, they came here, pasted the thing. Some was a struggle, but some way, somehow, God really helped us. So as a leader, whether you're a business owner or you're a pastor, the process of church building 
is spiritual warfare. In our church presently, we're studying uh, Joseph and Nehemiah. I remember during that process, I, I stayed a lot on Nehemiah. And I noticed that the moment you are doing anything for the kingdom, Sambalat and Tobias will rise up. And they're very influential. So you discover that when they were rebuilding the broken down walls of uh, Jerusalem, they were walking with one hand and was holding the sword in another hand. So it's, it's like the building and then the warfare. You don't tilt, you know, you, you, you build, but you fight. So there are times when, you, you know, I mean, you fast, you declare. If you don't, if you don't deal with it in the realm of the spirit, um, you can have unnecessary delay. Now, you won't know how powerful that breakthrough is until you hear of other people that experience delay. They started a project and government can delay it for five months, for one year. For you to go through it for a whole uh, four months, there about from, was it December to March, and nothing. And then until you completed and even moved in, it's the hand of God at work. Maybe if you're in that phase as a pastor, yeah. Maybe if you're in that phase as a pastor, I encourage you to study Nehemiah and Ezra. There's nothing we are doing that has not been done before. Nehemiah, and Nehemiah had speed. I pray that if you're in this phase, God will give you speed in the name of Jesus Christ. The, 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 the broken down world was restored under 52 days in spite of the uh, Tobias and Sambalats. You know. Now, one thing I also encourage is when you are doing a big thing like this, don't make noise. I've seen pastors, like this picture you are seeing now, there was a media team, they were tempted. Pastor Jeremy, let's post it. Let people, I said, no. Don't attract unnecessary enemies. Some people talk too much. Uh, and then, you know, just, you'll be showing everything and then unnecessary attacks will come. I said, don't show any picture online. Just leave it. Let the, we're in the incubation process. In fact, one of the things I did, there was, a, there was fire in our house during that time. I think it was in the living room or something. Just some, you know, I was very happy. <laughs> it did not, there was no harm. So I said, the Holy Spirit said, this is the best thing to do. Post the fire incidents on social media. Let people be praying and blessing you while you are doing this. And I hope you can understand that wisdom, right? Uh, you draw sympathy. You draw mercy. You draw encouragement from there. Rather than showing things that envy would stop the work. You understand? Some of us talk too early. We talk too much when you are in a process it's like, it's like trusting God for the fruit of the womb for years, and you now get pregnant, and the first test of positive, you've told everybody in the village. I'm not sure that is very wise. You need to incubate it. A premature baby, when attacked, can suffer uh, unnecessary challenges. So some of us just, I feel we just we talk too much. I'm not saying you shouldn't showcase what God is doing, but do it with discretion. Glory to God. Okay? So, uh, and can you, can you give us the power... The transformer. Now, I'm sorry I'm showing this, but uh, permit me to thank God for it because we've been working on it for some time. We got our own transformer this year. Amen. Uh, it might not be big to you, <clears throat> but it's big to us. I mean, we spend a lot of money on diesel. It's a lot. It's crazy if I mention the figures to us every, every day, especially weekends. So, I mean, this came in and and then there's some other installations. I mean, government is still yet <clears throat> to give us the final login, but we're at the final stage. But I, I just love it because when we moved to the good land, we literally had to believe God for everything. Drainage. We, did, we had to do drainage. You had to do roads. You had to do your water. Now we are doing our own power. Of course, we have our own power. We generator. Uh, but now we are doing, you know, and it's how cities are built. It's the mindset of greatness, Okay. Uh, so when we saw this, uh, it's a lot of money in that sense, but it might not be much to you, but we are grateful. Can you help me put your hands together for Jesus for helping us uh, get this? I mean, for those of us that have already gotten things like this, it's fine. But just make sure you thank God for us. Okay, you can now go to the, um, the dome pictures where we are now. The great dome. Yeah, so this is the dome and this is what we experience on Sundays. It's amazing uh, how, I mean, we started the third service uh, some weeks ago. I just remembered when we were in Suru Lere Church and then we moved in here and God had to tell us to also start or retain a church in Suru Lere after a while. 
I remember I was a bit scared that, ah, how will you do it? But now, the Surulere Church, they hold three great services in Surulere, where we left. And now we have three services here. And then other things that God is doing, both in Nigeria and outside the country. I just think this will be an encouragement to someone. In fact, what the Holy Spirit said is, as you are grateful for what you have, I'm going to move you to the next level. And somebody here is moving to the next level in Jesus' mighty name. Can we have the next slide uh, of that? Of the great dome. Okay. Okay. Uh, now let's talk about um, just my like a kind of introductory. Now I have two sessions this morning. I want to do a lot today. Uh, tomorrow we'll do some other stuff. Pastor Kingsley is coming in in the afternoon after the syndicate session, and then we can have a very good session with him and Q and A. I've been friends with Pastor Kingsley. Almost 20 years plus. In fact, I think I met Pastor Kingsley before I met any of my other friends uh, while I was on campus. I was living in the same area in Festac, so we used to preach for each other. It's amazing how God connects people. Uh, so I, I believe he has a wealth of experience to share, not necessarily about relationships, but about ministry, about life. And then we have a Q and A with him. Now, many of us also are aware that I'm close to people like. Um, Dr. Sam, mentors like Dr. Sam Adeyemi, Bishop David Oyedepo. And one of the things I picked up from Bishop Oyedepo especially is, it's not about the now, it's about the, the, the future, you know, because they've gone through a lot. Bishop Oyedepo will be 70 years in September. So I just realized that most of the time when he's talking to me, he's, he's always talking about uh, this thing, how will it be in 20 years' time, in 30 years' time? Because they also had friends, you understand, that they all started with doing very well. And somehow, names fizzle out. Ministries fizzle out. And I won't lie, there are some very personal stories that he has shared with me that sometimes you shake. That, wow, if somebody can achieve this level, and then under three years, bam, then we should all do things that will help us to build, uh, to last in the game. In fact, it's better to grow small, small in that sense and still last than blow up and blow up. <laughs> How do I say it? And blow out, you know. It's better. I mean, I, I love Jerry Savelle, for instance. Jerry Savelle has been in ministry for over 50 years. And when I, when I hear his story, it really touches me how he's been consistent. And he too talks about people that they knew in their time. Very large ministry. Very, you know, and then something goes wrong somewhere and everything just disappears. It's painful when Jerry Savelle, we mention some names of, of some people, we don't even know those people. And yet they were very big in their time. If you're a 30-year-old pastor today, you'll be 40 in 10 years' time. If you're 40, you'll be 50. If you're 50, if you're 50, you'll be 60 in 10 years' time. So great leaders, while we are building to be great now, we also invest in longevity of our lives and our ministry. For some people, it was not even that the ministry went down. It was the person that passed on maybe before his or her time. So it's a holistic approach. But as, as simple as it is, it's a mindset first. That, okay, I'm not just here for the short haul. I'm here for the long haul. Okay. So um, the, I said, not everyone in a race remains relevant. Some grow stronger. Others tend to fade. Not everyone in a race remains relevant. Some grow stronger, others tend to fail. Now, uh, it's not just enough to remain, but to be relevant. Because some are not dead, and the ministries are still here, but the relevance is almost out. And when there's no relevance for such a long time, do you know it's almost as good as dead? Because your voice is not having any influence anymore. Uh, Bishop David Abuye had his birthday about two weeks ago. So I remember, you know, we, we sent a gift, a gift to him. He, we, we spoke around, I think, 12 midnight or so. He called. Uh, and he said, he said it in vernacular. I'll try and interpret. He says, and you know, Adagba, uh, what does that mean? You two, I just want to know that, uh, you know, Adagba, that you two, you, you two, you will what? You will grow. And as he said, he said it like three times. He now said, and relevantly so. 
I said, Amen. Amen. That is, it's not just enough to dagba or to grow, but to remain relevant. Because if you are growing older and age is adding and then there's no relevance, what is the, what's, what's the benefit? That you are still anointed, supposedly. So not everyone in a race remains relevant. Some grow stronger, others tend to fade. We must seek ways to obtain helps from God to remain relevant and impactful. Okay, we must seek help. And I think that's why we are here. Acts chapter 26 verse 22 talked about um, the testimony of Apostle Paul. Paul said, ah, I have haven't obtained help from God. I have continued unto this day. So it takes the help of God to continue. I mean, do you know you can also be in a ministry as an associate pastor and not be relevant in that ministry anymore? And you cannot become disgruntled and become a Pharisee or a Sadducee or even a rebel. So for everyone, all these principles matter. You can be in a ministry and not be relevant anymore if you're not growing. So it's not about how long you have been in the church. We are the founders of the church. I was part of the group that started the church. That's not enough. But how relevant are you today? Don't be saying I was there when they started. And you are relevant maybe the first 10 years. But how relevant are you now? Therefore, having obtained help from God to this day, I stand. King James Version says, Therefore, having obtained help from God, I have continued unto this day. I would like us to lift our hands where we are and just pray for that help, okay? Everyone, if you're online, wherever you are, Father, I obtain helps from you. I obtain wisdom from you. I obtain strength from you. Therefore, having obtained help, Father, we obtain the necessary helps from you. Lift your voices and, and, and are sincere. I mean, thank God for the testimonies we already have. But we receive helps. We receive helps. We receive helps from God. We receive helps from God. Help. Help in leadership work. Help with parenting. Help as a mother, as a father. Help as the general overseer, as an associate pastor, as a, as a branch pastor. Help, Lord. Help in my career. Having obtained help from God, I stand. I will keep standing. Kalabo Shatana. We receive helps. This help comes from the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we are gathered here today. Send us helps. Send every minister, every ministry help from above in the name of Jesus Christ. Kalabo Shatana. Anyone that has gone a bit weakened, let there be new strength. Let there be recovery. Let there be restoration. Oh, Kabaya, Santolom, Barakasa, Kalaba. We obtain helps. We obtain helps. We receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. I can't hear you. Amen. Amen. Okay, so um, let's talk about some powerful secrets that would help us um, work in those helps. Of course, you know, anytime I try to talk to pastors, I'm always talking about hunger. <laughs> hunger. You need to remain hungry. This thing I'm saying now, it's not just for now. You can be hungry when the ministry just started. You can be hungry when, you know, the church is not growing or things are not working. But when you begin to see results, especially when you are trying to compare with some of your friends that are still, you know, you can begin to slow down. I, I spent the night on Friday in the office, you know, slept on the floor. Uh, the choir was having rehearsals here. You know, you know, I remember somebody was asking me, called me, where are you? I said, I'm in the office, you know. Ah, what are you doing there? You know, I just laughed. You know, it looks like uh, some, of, some of those things is for those ministers that are still struggling. No, no. Sacrifice is important if you need to keep going up. But you won't sacrifice if you are not hungry. Where hunger begins to win, impact and relevance dwindles. Where hunger begins to win, impact and relevance begins to dwindle. Proverbs 27, I think verse 7, To the hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. I pray that the Holy Spirit will stare in everyone. Whether you're a business owner or pastor, the moment there's no drive in you anymore, the work begins to fade. Don't retire before your time. Don't settle before it's due. 
some of our students are also here. This hunger thing is forever. As you move from one face to the other, you must remain hungry for relevance. I notice that you stop getting God's attention when there is no hunger in you. If you look at the life of Jesus on earth, he only kind of responded to people that were hungry. You hear blind Bartimaeus shouting, Son of David, have mercy upon me. And he responded. So I believe hunger itself is a prayer point. A satisfied soul loads the honeycomb, but to a hungry soul, every what? Bitter thing is sweet. The bitter, the bitter prizes to pay. The price of discipline. The price of fasting. There, there are prices to pay. You won't pay it if you are already satisfied. Hunger. Hunger is so key. And what helps you to be hungry? When you have seen some measure of result, look out for what others have seen. One day I was in Canaan land and uh, they were calling some of us uh, protégés of Bishop Oedekwo. That was some years ago of uh, Bishop Oedekwo to come and share testimonies, you know. I, was, I think I was the youngest. So I remember uh, some pastors, one of the, one of, one of the protégés came out and said, praise the Lord. Uh, yeah, God is good. Um, we never knew that this can happen in our ministry. They were able to acquire this property in Ikeja, 84 million. Uh, this, uh, I was hearing that figure for the first time. Well, not for the first time that, eh? Then we two were acquiring things then, but maybe 12 million or 23 million. That was then. But I remember that figure got my attention then. Now we've passed that. Oh, we've seen that we give, you know. So when you're at a level, even in your attendance, you need to seek other higher ones. If not, you will settle. You've seen 100 million, people have seen billions. You've seen 1 billion, people have seen 5 billion. I remember my wife and I were with Bishop Oedekwo in January and were discussing about, he was talking about givings, how that has blessed him. He said for the ark, for the ark that is presently being constructed, that him and his wife had given 10 billion. I said, what did he say, sir? He said, yes, 10 billion from our family. I've not done that, but I've had it. And that's entered. Well, we have done 5 million, we have done uh, 7 million, maybe 10 million, 2 million. But you have had 10 billion, you'll be hungry. So you need higher figures, higher experiences. He said to me that, do you know that when Archbishop Benson Dahosa was alive, that God led him and their ministry to sow a lot into the university, which was like the first Christian university at that time. He said, a lot of people don't know that at that time, he did not know that they were to have a university. But they were given almost sacrificially for the university to run. I'm talking about several millions. He said, looking back now, he believes that it was the seed they sowed in that university that gave back to a covenant university. You learn. So there are levels. When you look at those levels, it drives, it, it, it keeps you, ah, I've not started. And it's better. Don't let the hills and the hallelujah of people keep you down. One plot is great, but there's one acre. We were on one plot in Surulere. Five services. Now we have acres here. But there are thousands of acres. So how do you get some of those levels to hear them or to see them? Exposure. Exposure. Exposure helps you to think differently. Some of us are here maybe for the first time at the good land. Maybe it's your seventh time. There are some things you might see that might bless you and be inspired. Or you just ask some of our pastors some questions. And it can get, it can just tip you over. Oh, there's a possibility here. Exposure. And I, I need us to believe in visiting places. I'm, I'm a bit proficient in that. I can take a whole trip to a place just to see and ask questions. Exposure. I pray we, don't, we, won't, we won't remain village leaders. Eh? We'll be global leaders in Jesus' mighty name. Yes. 
this exposure both in your local environment and in the outside environment you can travel out what you have in your heart the resources will come to you don't stay where you are a lot of leaders don't know they are not doing well in terms of excellence and leadership style because you don't go out you are isolated and look you keep seeing the same thing maybe you are a branch pastor now you keep seeing your branch, you get home, your family, you get home. It's the same thing you are seeing. It can't be better until you suit differently. Go somewhere else. Travel, take a trip somewhere and see, ask questions. The moment some pictures enter your system, ah, angels will begin to work on how that thing will be interpreted in your own ministry. Enlargement happens within first before it happens on the outside. You can never have enlightenment on the outside until it has been installed on your inside. And enlightenment will not happen until you see places of enlightenment. I remember Goshen in uh, Abuja. The day Bishop Oedepo was to pray over the place. I was privileged to be on the same trip with him. That was the main reason he was going there. So he went there close to Nasarawa State and it was a forest. And then we got down from the plane, drove to that. I mean, I, I was still maybe young, you know, younger that, at that time. We drove to the place. We came down, Bishop Abioye, everybody. And then he lifted up his hands and said, Lord, thank you for this place. It was a forest, just bland uh, trees. And now it's, it's a whole mini city. But when you see that, it tells you that a church can move from one plot and become a city under 10 years or 20 years as God takes you face by face. So, I don't know what decision you can make this month of March between now and end of the year and, and, and have some better exposure. There are many things you are arguing about with your leader or with yourself and the reason is because you've not seen anything or you've not seen as much as you can see. And if you are an associate pastor here, you might be limiting your leader if you are thinking at the, uh, at the level where you are. Visit places. Visit other ministries. Stop. You know, you need to throw envy away. You need to throw all those things away. Visit and see. Wow, okay. This is how the toilet can be. Wow, oh, this is how they do their small groups. Oh, this is how they do their communion. Oh, and if you can travel out of the country, see. See. Sometimes it can be on your device, on YouTube. You sit down like this with knots, healthy knots. And be seen. What? Wow. Not fake videos. Real videos. You can watch it ten times on the sitting. But something happens to you. I've been there watching something. And I began to prophesy. I began to pray in tongues. And I know something has shifted on my inside. Exposure makes the difference. And any time you discern the move of God. You need to move and make inquiries. When you see that God is moving somewhere. Go and check what is moving. <laughs> uh, Jerry Save made a statement uh, some, I think, weeks ago about that great man, Lester Sumra. Lester Sumra, when God called him, he was resisting the call. When he now finally agreed to respond to the call, Lester Sumra now made a prayer to God. He said, Lord, I've agreed. I'm going to work with you. He now said, but please, in my lifetime, I want to be in on any of the, your move on the earth. Don't leave me out of it. I want to be in, in the middle. I don't want to be doing something and then you're moving like this and I'm moving like that. I want to be in your move my lifetime. And that's what happened to him till he passed on as much as possible. When you discern the move of God, check it out. You know, what is happening how is it being done? Why are people gathering in this place? Why are they not gathering in this place? Check it out. Investigate. What is happening? How is it being done? That's the two questions in the next slide. What is happening? It's part of the exposure. Not that you see, okay, you ask, how, 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 how is it being done? And what is, what is happening? That question will help you make some changes in your life and in your organization, whether it's business or career. 
it will help you make some changes. That what is happening here, self? How ah, can somebody have a shed and then people are gathering in overflow? Like that of Jesus Christ. And it's in our synagogue, people are empty. What is happening here? Then how is it being done? What is the catalyst? Be incurably curious. You are faithful. You are good. Be incurably what? Curious. I'm not saying everywhere that you have people gathering massively is the move of God. But there are many authentic, massive move of God. When I say move of God, it can be in business. Look at the digital age in terms of uh, uh, finances, fintech. It's a move of God. It's not the move of the devil. So wh- wh- why is it like that? I remember I, I called a, a finance uh, leader in the office about, is it two years ago? That we need to open an account in the United Kingdom. You are delaying this thing. I just feel there are people watching online that want to give. I know they were slowing. I said, "Please, just get it, open it." We are grateful we did. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I won't say more than that. But we are grateful we did. By the time you two checked it after like six months, I said, "Can you ima- I just, can you imagine if you did not open this thing? You won't know that." You are losing something. Are there things you, we, we are even still losing now that we don't know? Are there losses you are incurring as a ministry, as a business, just because you are not curious enough to take steps, smart enough to take the right steps? When we give uh, sacrificially um, um, in January, you know, we do that at the beginning of every year, people do it all over the world. But it just showed me uh, people, people have sent their own sacrifice in, in the UK. Thousands upon thousands of pounds sterling. Wow. What if you, you feel hey, we don't have the document? We don't have this one. Take steps. Be incurably curious. Okay. Another thing we want to um, keep hammering on, which is an endless journey, is commitment to excellence. I hope you are still focused here. Commitment to what? Excellence. Somebody say excellence. Say louder. Excellence is to do a common thing in an uncommon way. I was sharing at a leadership conference on Thursday. Uh, VICM, one para minister, very, very great meeting. And we were talking about the story of um, Samuel, which I've, I think we've shared severally. This is a reminder for some of us. It got my attention. I, I, I bought a book, um, Church Marketing. Um, so, I, 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 for the first time, I saw that verse in a different way. Can you imagine Prophet Samuel that was hearing the voice of God as a, as a boy? Almost anointed Eliab, wrongly. Right? If God didn't tell him, you know, we have just made him the king. Why? What he was saying? If not, God said, it's not the one. Oh, the thing didn't flow. You were just meant earlier. You are not the king of... And the reason is because of what he saw. He looked big. So, God himself says, man looks at what? The outward appearance, appearance, but he looks at the heart. So, that book helped me to see that, ah, it's not just the heart of the pastor that matters. Uh, what people see influences them. And that's what excellence is all about. It honors God and inspires man. And excellence starts with you as a leader. The way you dress, the way your wife dresses, the, the church. We do a lot of fights in this place. Leaders will always, if you are given to excellence, you keep fighting your people, which is a healthy fight. The reason is this. Anything people see repeatedly, their optics adjust to it and it looks like it's okay. And something can can be very rotten and the person does not even know it has become rotten because they keep seeing it every day. It's human nature. That's why exposure is good. You won't know that this thing is expired or this rock doesn't make any meaning or this thing is tattered until you go somewhere else and you see how they lay it. Hey! Excellence. Excellence. Man looks at the outward appearance 
But God looks at the heart. First Samuel 16, 7. As we proceed into the year, what are the things you can change in your place of business or your ministry? Repenting, tidying up, air conditioners, man is moving from hell into heaven. Every time we have improved on our facility in our ministry, it just grows. It's something about man, what they see attracts them. And the unbelievers, they know. That's why they invest a lot in what will be attracting people. Even if it's a poison, like alcohol, you see those bottles, you see those... Have you seen those advertisements? Made of black. It's alcohol. It's destructive. Destroying marriages, destroying health. But the way they think, we, they make it look like it's big boys that take this thing. It's a narrative. So I charge you or challenge you when you get back. Maybe before you... Reverend Sam, I did mean, made a statement one day. He said, when they employ new staff in Desta, he will call the new staff separately and tell them, now that you're just new, please quickly go around on my behalf. Anything that you feel needs adjustment, quickly come and tell me. Before you two join so much and your eyes are not seen again, it will shock you that most of your leaders are not seen again like this, you see. Because what you, I mean, it's like uh, stench. You know stench? When you are in a room that is stenchy, I hope that's correct. After a while, your nose, you don't even think it's, the, the room is smelly anymore. But when a new person just, uh, mm, why? It's coming from outside. He has not been adjusted to it. So there are many things that our eyes, our minds have, have, have been aligned to that is killing the taste of excellence in organizations. You need to see again. That's why you need to visit public places that are excellent. The least you can do is to visit Radisson Blue, Sheraton, some top class, and just go into their lobby. You will get ideas. A church can become a village unknowingly because everybody is seeing the same thing and they think everything is fine. So let's get back on the slides. Man looks at the... Uh, Man looks at the outward appearance. In fact, some ministries that they will have plenty of uh, anointing or good heart, if the appearance is very good, they will still attract people. But it's not better for you to have the right heart, anointing, and then good appearance. That should be your aim. So things like ambience. Now, excellence is not just in the physical thing, but in the way you carry out your task. Ambience. Timing. The flow of the service, the environment. I still fought this morning, but it's a healthy fight. No, this can't be here. Let's move this one there. Excellence is not perfection. No. Excellence is, you know, attaining the highest level of beauty at the level where you are, that you can be better. No, let's arrange this place differently. Let's do this differently. The ambience, the feel, the timing of your services. How does it flow? I mean, uh, how many of us have been to parties before and you like the ambience, it looks very nice, even the music is very good, but you are happy when you got there. You like everything, but it now looks like the food is not coming on time. Have you noticed that uh, all the things you like, you start getting angry at everything? I mean, I've been in a ceremony before with two of my leaders. I won't forget that day. They put us even in front. And we're just just you know, the drum, everything. And then one hour, two hours, and one of my leaders just said, ah, sir, ah, what's happening? I said, what's happening? Ah. He said, ah, ah, sit <laughs> I don't know what happened. Most of the, uh, what do they call them, hostess or something, were just passing our table. They were carrying food. Ah, ah. Just, just that, mama, ah, ah. Oh. I mean, it's like, ah, ah. yeah, we are in the front, but don't make us uh, die here. He said, he has not eaten his money. He thought they would give him food on time. That's what he said. Too. His eyes are changed. And understand. Guess what happened? By the time we pulled the woman, the food had finished. I, I'm not sure I left that party happy. I, I won't lie to you. Because I was hungry. Sometimes when I go for ceremonies like that, I don't want to load myself too much so I can partake of the thing. But now I've learned my lesson. I gauge myself more in case of in case it is. Because you can't be angry <laughs> as a senior man in a meeting, just smiling. <laughs> the food had finished. 
You now said, Pastor, I said we should have called this woman since. So I said, ah, I can have, I can we? <laughs> How do we know the food will finish before it's time? But in a church service, I believe serving the word on time matters. I've, I, I was in a ministry some, some time ago. I was to preach. <laughs> I didn't like it. As I was sitting down for almost two hours. Before they called me up to preach. It's not good. Drama, songing, everything. The people were already dead. When I came up to resurrect themselves, it was hard for me. They couldn't eat. So I think, I think, you don't serve the food too late. I'm talking about the timing and the flow of a service. Especially if you know your word is okay. Oh. I pray your word is okay. I'm talking about the delivery of the word. Serve the food on time. Some things can even come after the word. It makes it sweet. They can do it during offering, towards the end. Don't load people after the praise and worship. Drama will do 20 minutes. Uh, the children's church, 27 minutes. Now be lining up, lining up, lining up. After that one, the teens church also have a presentation. Please put your hands together for them. And then people are already off. The pastor now comes. Today, we are teaching on and that kind of flow deadens the experience. It may affect people coming the next Sunday. So what can you do about the flow of your service? I believe every Sunday service should be as wow as possible. Leave people wanting to come the next week. Leave people excited about what happened the next week. The same thing in your business, with your products. Somebody should be willing to tell somebody else about, ah, man, I love this product. I love this particular service. It's seamless. The timing is fantastic. What can you do about that? The ambience, the timing, the environment. And then, spiritual power. Spiritual power. <laughs> spiritual power. I think we already know about that, but let me just encourage that for us as pastors, whether you're a branch pastor, the way your Saturday goes, we show up on Sunday morning. The devil knows these things. So he will just load you with unnecessary activities on Saturday. Look, I, I learned this thing. I, I noticed that when you don't pray and you are adequately spiritually focused on Saturday, the Sunday service will be dry. So I'm appealing to us, as well as I said, pastors. Invest in the spiritual, add to the Geo, add to everybody. When there's power in the system, when people come on Sunday morning, you see them praying in the Holy Ghost. You see that's a, that's a, you know, in the days of his power, his people shall be what? There'll be some willingness. But when there is no power, only administrative work on Saturday, too much of mental work, it will show up on Sunday morning. You don't, you don't need that. You can do all those admin on Tuesday, do your uh, on Thursday. But when it's Friday, Saturday, start allowing the cloud of the Spirit to grow stronger. In fact, it is part of what will make some people leave their homes to come to service. Power. People will be willing to come. And when they come, they'll be willing to serve. Willing to give. When that power is not there, ladies and gentlemen, it will look very somehow. If you have a service and you notice people are always sleepy and it's looking dry, it is not just a senior pastor's problem, it's associates. Go and check their Saturdays. Some of them were in a party. Some of them were doing unnecessary administrative meetings. Nobody really prayed. You know, there, there's a plan, no? but plan is not the same as power. Spiritual power. I'm, I'm begging us, especially the top pastors in a ministry, because it's not only your senior pastor's power that makes it work, it's the collaborative power. Glory to God. When that power jams each other, you will feel it on Sunday morning. You see the worship team, the combustion is there. The newcomers are ready to stay. Because if you have too much of dry services, the church will not grow anymore. 